what's up fellow lords of gaming and welcome back to the channel so we're jumping in with the first ascendant content today so we're going to be working on specifically ultimate ajax the undying beast all right guys so before we jump into this please do me a favor like and subscribe to the video i appreciate the support I would appreciate some more support so let's go and get on to this so okay ajax this is who i've been playing it's probably my favorite descendant of the ones i've unlocked thus far that doesn't necessarily mean that you could copy this build for everybody so i wouldn't expect that so we're gonna make use of ajax in the way that i think that he was intended to be played and that's basically keeping others alive keeping himself alive so being a control support dps type character um you could be a bit more aggressive with ajax i do have a build for that that i'll bring you in another video but for the purpose of this one we're gonna go with that we're picking up bunnies we're picking up glaze and we're keeping them alive so they can do the dps that we need them to do all right in that vein this is what we got starting off with the reactors uh reactor basically using a material phase reactor i think is probably the best one for ajax so you're gonna probably have to farm this multiple times so that way you can get a really really good uh substat to it as well i'm still working on that i would like to have something that has dimension uh, uh you know dimension power boost and you know maybe even have a non-dimensional power boost um but it's taken me a while to burn to burn this i was hoping that by this point i would have one but i don't so like you can see here this is what be a bad one if i had the thunder cage mounted so i kept this one in here with the skill cooldown um on it and so yeah and this one has a skill power boost but then it has singular skill power boost and i don't use singular skills so that's the material phase reactor if you're looking for your material phase reactor you just haven't had any luck and you don't know where to start go over to your map go to difficulty level rewards inside of here and this is going to basically be where you going to be where you can actually look for your reactor so a very simple um change of the filters non-attribute for instance and dimension you'll be able to find a specific place for you to farm your reactor so here for my general rounds it would be best if i was looking in rockfall and then you can see special impact and high power rounds just a little tip for you guys who still are trying to find your perfect phase reactor but haven't quite got around to it external components i am using the annihilation set um, you can see here that i've got uh the auxiliary power it's got it i kept this one because it has a good defense stat on it and it also has my kuiper shard boost on it as well so that was really good then i'm using the annihilation sensor so you can see this one had a consumable drop rate that was the reason why i was using it um you really don't need to go them more than two sets on here if you want to arbitrarily raise your defense numbers to be a little bit higher um, you could switch out you know your memory and your processor for maybe two different set effects and you know get for a defense or a max hp set inside either one of these so that way you could boost them or get dual duels but these had some really good effects on them so i decided to leave them i'm looking for something a little bit better than this but this was the best that i could find right now so <clears throat> You can see what my stats are here firearm tag really doesn't matter i'm working on the uh i can't remember what gun i'm working on right now but i'll show you guys in a minute uh my defense is about ninety thousand. you can see my max shield is about 215 hp is almost sixteen thousand, and then my max mp is uh 202 if you're looking for a different set to utilize for um your uh, external components i would suggest especially if you can find a group of people who are good to go for the bravery sensor set which can be obtained from defeating the obstructor boss i've been having a hard time getting a group of people that can do that one um the other option for you would be like the slayer set to increase you know some of your uh rounds on the tamer and stuff like that um, that's a good set as well and then um, last but not least like I told you go farm like you know a defense support memory or a uh, sensor uh, processor as well and you can swap those out so that way you can boost your witcher calls I don't think that you really need to with my with the setup that I have and let's get into the hot which is the descendant modules so here you guys can see some of the modules I'm using one of the ones that we're going to start off with with the sub uh, module is going to uh, excuse me you know is the trans send it module and you can see i'm using body enhancement so that effectively changes the way that you're going to play ajax because typically the way you play 
platform, you utilize your skills and you're going to build up void energy. And that allows you to cast one enhanced version of a skill inside of there as long as you're in combat. This one will affect my uh, def defense and my shield by a set amount. You can see there on the right, it's 22.5% for each of those. So since I'm no longer collecting void energy, all of that goes to my uh, defense and my shield based on my max HP. So in this regard, it's important for you to get that HP as high as you possibly can. OK, so pay attention to that one, because I'm going to show you some changes that you possibly could make to your build to get your uh, shield even higher. So number one. Starting off uh, from the left to right, we've got HP amplification. So I'm using HP amplification is giving me a max HP of 227.2%, which is good, but it's also giving me a decrease in my max shield by about 36.5%. Now you could switch this out. I was using battle stamina, for instance, um, and that's that was a better, well, I won't say better. It's a good mod, but essentially you're leaving about 100% 100, uh, 100 HP on a table by using it and you're getting the skill duration of 8.8 .8. so i haven't really found a, another hp type uh module that i would keep in the, that i remove inside of its place so i just kept that one inside there now you could go with time distribution i'm playing around with this one but again like i said you're still not hitting those high hp numbers on your build so play around with that one uh at your will um, those are the only ones that i've essentially have found that you know really will help your your build out this is going to hit the hit the highs next up i'm using skill extension i still haven't really raised these at all but this is basically placed then to increase the duration of my shields and my barriers because that's my primary but but butter with this bread and butter with this is i'm putting up shields i'm putting up my orbit barrier putting up my hypercube so that way i can keep people alive help them out as much as possible next up non-attribute skill power is the one that i'm using um you could switch this out for maybe focus uh on attribute so i'll show you this one actually i am going to end up switching to this one so focus non-attribute this one it essentially will give you just about the same non-attribute power probably i think it's like four percent less because this will can go up to 70 77 percent and non-attribute will go up to like 81 percent but this will also give you the skill cooldown of 6.1 percent so help decrease the skill cooldown time inside there um next up shield conversion so getting that defense number up as high as possible so that way when your shields do go down you have that defense available to you this one is also going to have the negative drawback of um pulling down your max shield i haven't found a way around this one at all i feel like if you're going to be building ajax directly into um your defense then you're going to probably be using that one i was utilizing iron defense uh originally and getting the skill power modifier so that way I could also use that skill power on my other two abilities, which I have in another build. But you're losing out on a lot of defense there. You can see 89.8 and you can see 166. So that's a lot. That's almost 70% defense that you're basically losing out on there. Um, I didn't find another one that I think is a better cue than that one. So if you guys have suggestions, please let me know. I'm using midair maneuvering because that's my favorite one of the ones that I've collected um, for my sub build there. Level it up. So that way you can get the additional 10 mod capacities that you have inside there. So you can hit 80. The next ones that I'm using, some of these are going to be pretty much, you know, you should be using this on all defendants. Increased defense, that should be a given on any type of descendant that you're building. Pretty good. Um, next up is increased HP. You should be using that on every descendant. And then nibble fingers. Obviously, nimble fingers is going to help every descendant cast their skills and their abilities more. I am using like utilizing uh, agony so that way I can get another defensive buff inside of here. Um, I haven't really thought of anything other than maybe like spear and shield to switch out for this. So you could go with spear and shield and get the defense up. You will hit a higher defense number as well with spear and shield because it starts at 22 and that skill power at 8.1 is pretty decent. I have I am playing around with that one in another build. So that one may end up getting switched out for this one. And then lastly, I'm using an iron wheel. So essentially the way this one works is, is when my shield goes down, my defense number will kick up 
as well. So it's a good ability in that one. And I think it's good whether you're trying to play aggressive Ajax or, where you, or you're trying to play support style Ajax where you're utilizing his barriers and stuff like that. Now let's talk about the way that specifically works because you're going to notice the body enhancement one in the first place. So again, like you can see, here goes my stats, but watch when we go to the actual game world. So if I leave all beyond, and let's say I'm going to go over to Adni Desert. I've been over here farming Kuiper, so let's uh, let's go here anyways. It's the place on my mind. You're gonna notice a change in my stat numbers. And this is where you're gonna see the body enhancement, the 22.5% actually take effect. So just by being here, my defense now is at 106,000, basically on the body enhancement. And then you can see my shield because of that as well is getting that 22.5% enhancement as well. So my shield max is 1170. So it's a good place like that body enhancement is a really good place to start out your build and so forth. I haven't really found a necessity on the enhanced version versus me building out my barriers this way. Remember your barriers are going to be able to take a sustain a set amount of damage in the first place. So you kind of want to play and pay attention to that. You know what I mean? Especially like if you notice when I go inside, uh, when I look at my skills overall, I'm looking at like what the modification to those durations are going to be. And that's what I'm effectively trying to make sure that I also maximize as well. So I'm working on the build towards there. Now, the way this works is, is you have your white bar, which is your shield. And that's the white line item that's going across right below the ammo. And then you have the red bar, which is your health. When that shield goes down, effectively, that you lose all white bars there, you are going to then receive a bonus from the uh, from the iron will. And I knew this was going to happen. There's nobody here. So effectively, when that shield goes all the way down, what you'll see is a rise of roughly whatever you have that is. So at, I think iron will maxes out at like 120 120 125 percent so you'll get an increase of 125 percent to this stat right here your 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 defensive stat so i've seen this go up to about 123 where i'm at right now i expect this to probably go up to about 130,000 at max for the iron will i'm playing around with it because as you can see like I've had to do some manipulations on it. I feel like this one is probably the benefit of it is that I'm having to do optimizations now. So you can see with Ultimate Ajax, I already was I already had two additional polarizations from normal Ajax. Normal Ajax starts out with two. Ultimate Ajax starts out with four. I've invested one catalyst to polarize one slot. I'm going to invest another so that way I can polarize another slot and bring the cost down so that way I can increase some of my other abilities. But I had to create these videos before I did it because it is a process. Every single time you add a new catalyzation, that basically makes you do something else. So you can see here, my shield is down now. And as long as my shield is down, I'm gonna benefit from that effect. So I probably should have showed you this before I, before my shield came back, but it's essentially while that shield is down is the only time that it takes effect inside of there. So you would need to have enemies continue killing you. But this is the reason why I said Iron Will could be good for you even if you're playing with, you know, a aggressive Ajax type build, because then you could still conceivably go in here and have this aggressive Ajax and when that shield comes down, you will see the benefit of that iron and iron will inside there as well. So I think an iron will is probably could be centerpiece to a lot of Ajax builds because it's going to add another layer of defensive. What I found from this build is essentially allows me to rock out on Ajax and play uh, support where I can go in and make heals and uh, sustain damage and not have to worry about too much, uh, especially as you know, there are heal, um, heal bubbles or whatever that'll drop into the left and right. So I'll show you this guys this right now. So I'll let this these guys shoot at me. And as soon as the shield comes down, you notice that the number is up there. So we're at 125%
So that's essentially the way the build works. So that way, when that 125,000 comes down, I'm good. Now, like I said, if you wanted to make this an even, uh, you know, or to work out because you didn't like the shield coming down, all you'd have to do is take some of these incentive modules and change them for the modifications that I told you to make. Now, you'll probably lose out on some HP for some of these levels, but you know, you'll gain, uh, you'll gain that still in terms of your shield. I just find that the shield doesn't seem to be that important because as I'm running around, regardless of whether I have 3,000, which is what I can get the shield to, or 1,000, uh, I've actually got it to be between three and 5,000, and 1,000 inside of the value, that shield comes down pretty quickly all the time. Now, the shield recovery works out really well because it'll come back as long as you're out of combat really quickly, but typically, that's what I found. So that's the build I'm currently walk, working on right now. Like I said, the Undying Beast for, form of Ajax. I do plan on showing you guys another video of showing you a, a more aggressive style played Ajax centered around his Void Walk and his Expulsion abilities. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, guys. Peace.